On Hot 96 News this hour. We get concerned when we begin hearing words like national accord, which is euphemism for Nuzumkate. We are not interested in any form of handshake, in any form of sharing of political power. Watu wache tukijua akona askari huko, tutaandamana na tutasema askari wote watoke kwetu. Who is going to speak for the people of Keriofale? The Hot 96 News Now. With Teddy Otiano. Very good afternoon and welcome to the broadcast. The High Court has declined to stop the ongoing recruitment of IBC chairperson and sex members of the electoral body. Issuing its verdict, the court further directed that the matter be hard into parties on the 13th of April this year. In the case, Busia Senator Okium Tata moved to court seeking to suspend all actions and activities of the IBC selection panel. Kenya has nominated Court of Appeal Judge Awanjiru Karanja for the position of judge at the International Criminal Court. Justice Karanja, who is currently the most senior judge in the Court of Appeal, is one of the 15 candidates from around the world who will face off in the election. The exercise will take place at the United Nations headquarters in New York from the 4th to the 14th of December this year. Detectives based at the DCI Homicide Department are finalizing investigations following the death of Jeff Mwathi on the 22nd of February this year. In a case that has attracted a lot of public interest, the DCI director, Mohamed Amin, ordered fresh investigations to establish in great detail circumstances leading to Jeff Mwathi's death. Consequently, upon the recommendations of the homicide experts, the body was earlier on exhumed for fresh autopsy and some tools obtained. Well, the DCI is now waiting for a final report from the government pathologist, which will inform the final cause of action. In other news, uh, Inspector General of Police uh, Jafet Kome has assured Kenyans of their safety during the Easter holiday as they gather in different parts of the country for celebrations. In a statement, IG Kome noted that he has heightened surveillance and is told appropriate measures to ensure that security is upheld. He added that officers will be adequately deployed to major highways, shopping malls, airports, railway and bus stations, places of worship, as well as recreational centers. The police boss, however, was keen to point out that statistics have shown that a high number of road accidents are always recorded during the holidays, which has remained a major cause of injuries and fatalities. He therefore urged all motorists to exercise caution when using the roads and comply with the set traffic guidelines. The body of a 180-year-old woman has been exhumed in Kandara's Kibiko area in what has turned out to be a perplexing case of mistaken identity. The exhumation of Elizabeth Wairimo's body was led by health officers and attended by families from both sides. According to Lydia Modoni's grandson, James Samungai, during the burial last week, the family retrieved Wairimo's body from Gaishanjiro Mochari, thinking it was Lydia Modoni's. The two families met in court on Wednesday to resolve the confusion and agree on the exhumation exercise. Meanwhile, Wairimo's family was still reeling from the bizarre incident has announced that plans to bury the 101 or rather 108 year old relative are in the works. In Tatavita, a total of four bodies, including a mother and her, t- uh, and her children, brother, have now been retrieved following floods in Tatavita County. The fourth body was retrieved this morning, bringing the four day search operation to a halt. The expectant woman and her three children was swept by flash floods at Kironge on Sunday night. Local leaders have warned those living near River Voy and areas near dams to move to hilly areas as the rainy season poses a risk to their lives. Let's now cross the borders. Zimbabwe now plans to enact a law criminalizing the recruitment of its health personnel by other countries. Vice President Constantino Chiwenga, who is also the country's health minister, has said that the drain of healthcare professionals was as good as human trafficking. He said that stiffer penalties will be imposed on those that he accused of robbing the nation of its human capital. Local media say that more than 4,000 nurses and doctors have left Zimbabwe since February 2021. That brings us to seven minutes. 
That's one o'clock. These and more stories at two. I'm Teddy Otieno. Good afternoon. The Hot 96 News.